welcome back. Uh, my name is Savannah for anyone new and today I'm going to be talking about a topic that's not really mentioned much when it comes to owning an African land snail and that is types of gals or types of giant African land snails. So today I'm not going to run through all of them because as some African snail owners may know there are quite a few but I am going to run through the main ones like the most popular ones the most well known ones and if you guys want a part two of lesser known African snail species then let me know. So first off um, when it comes to my own snails I've had two types of African snail species so I'm going to kick it off and show you those guys. Funnily enough, one of the species I own is the most owned, and then one of the species I own is one of the lesser owned. So first off, let's kick it off with the one that is lesser known out of my two, and that is the Achitna, or some people say Achitina. So I think Achitina is the common term, but I grew up saying Achitna, so apologies if I slip up throughout this video. But for the sake of this video, let's try and say it right, so it's Achitina uh, Immaculata. So when it comes to this species, um, there are several different kinds, but in this case the one I have is an Achatina Immaculata Pink Lip Snail. And this is a great species to own, they are moderate in care, so I wouldn't recommend it for a first time snail owner, but they're definitely not the most difficult. So a great way to tell them apart is they have a really rough looking shell. So if you're on the market for a pretty looking African snail, this is not the one you want to go for. But of course when it comes to a snail, hopefully you're not choosing just based on looks, maybe looking to their care, how many eggs they lay as a clutch, and also their humidity um, and their needs in general because the heat mat can be a real big issue for first time snail owners. So I'm going to show you my snail. I have one Achatina Immaculata Pink Lip Snail and her name is Sianda. I had three but they have unfortunately passed. So at the moment Sianda's eating so I'm going to bring the camera towards her enclosure so you can have a closer look at her. So here she is, as you can see she's a very rough looking snail, bless her. She's not your traditional glossy silky looking snail with all those pretty markings. But she is absolutely gorgeous, she is about 4 or 5 years old now and she's snuggled into a mushroom having a munch so I'm not going to interrupt her too much. These guys can really stretch out long and they look really beautiful when they do because their body is two toned. So you can't see it very well right now, but in the middle she has a dark brown line and on both sides she's lighter in colour. I can also show you um, the two other shells. I like to keep their shells. I have a video on preserving African snail shells. But here we have a smaller Achatina Immaculata Pink Lip Snail. And you can see they have absolutely gorgeous markings. Uh, and this is an older one. So this was Galukig and this is Olabisi. They're the same kind of snail, but their shells look so different. So when they're juveniles, their patterns are very prominent. They almost look like they have these really big stripes and spirals. And then as they age, the spacing spreads out. And that's why they look almost just fully brown and they lose a lot of their strong patterns like they have here. But they are the same snail. Th these guys don't look as rough and white as Sianda, but that's because Sianda's much older. So as they age, their shell gets more... Uh, rough and a little bit uglier looking some people would say uh, but I think they're really really beautiful. When it comes to the Achatina Immaculata species you would have heard of a pink lipped species and then the uh, Panthera species. So the Panthera species is less common but when you're looking for a pink lipped species a great way to identify them is based on this lip area here. So the camera's not really picking it up but this is bright pink it's almost like a burgundy bright pink colour and all the pink lip species have this. You can see it even when the snail is inside and it can go all the way back into their shell. It's really hard to see on these guys. I would pick up Sianda but I don't want to disturb her while she's eating. But when they're alive their pink is even more prominent so that's a great way to tell them apart. So when it comes to their care they need about 24 to 27 degrees in heat when you're looking after them and then when it comes to humidity they're more of an easier snail to look after. They only need about 70 to 80 percent humidity. Some African snails require much more and some require much less. This is why they're a moderate in between uh, when it comes to caring for this species. And typically when it comes to their size, they're not the largest African snail you can get, but they're certainly not the smallest. This is a great example. So this one I'd say is a juvenile, it only lived for about 
two years maybe it got deep shell retraction syndrome and then this one lived for about three years Sianda has stunted growth i don't know why uh, there could be so many factors but she is smaller than this one already and traditionally they only get to about 15 centimeters in length so they're not the largest but they are still pretty big for an african snail this next species is the most common across the board lots of snail owners go for this species for a very specific reason and that reason being is that they're massively overbred they're also a huge agricultural pest across the world in some countries these guys are hated and that is because they wipe out crops and plants for lots of farmers they're known to eat bananas nuts cauliflowers peas broccoli uh, literally anything these snails can get their slime on they will so this is the achitina lizard chitina fulica also known as an achitina fulica or just a fulica species this is an albino one typically you don't refer to them as albino so there are five or six categories of the fulica species so typically when they have this bright yellow shell and then a bright white body so not a dark body just a bright white albino like body that is a fulica judatsi or judatsi but when they have a yellow shell and a dark body that is the rodatsi so you've got judatsi and rodatsi you also have the normal kind They're, they don't look albino they don't have a yellow shell they just have a long brown body that's the normal fulica um lizard chitna fulica but yeah so these guys are a massive pest they can lay 10 to 300 eggs in one clutch so they can do lots of breeding and the reason uh, first time snail owners like to own these guys is because they're easy to get your hands on and they are easy to care for so when it comes to choosing your snail an uh, a, a, a chitna or an achitina Fulica is the best kind to care for in terms of its heat and its humidity. It really isn't fussy. So they only need about 20 to 25 degrees in heat, which is significantly less than a 27 degree heat mat. It doesn't sound like a big difference, but that really can make a difference in your home and what you're paying for. And then also in humidity, it only needs about 60 to 70%, which is on the lower scale of humidity for a snail. So this one was called Misago, and believe it or not, she's actually my largest out of all of them, which is really odd because typically the Fulica species have stunted growth because of overbreeding, but she did really well. I mean, this one typically would be larger. You'd expect it to be larger when buying it. I'm not sure if that's doing it justice, but you can really see how much bigger the Fulica is and they create incredible shells when they do pass it's a great memory typically in length they're only supposed to get to about 12 centimeters but you can see how much larger that is in comparison to 12 centimeters but a good thing to note is that African snails can typically live for 10 to 15 years with this species they're commonly known to only live two to five years and this is down to their overbreeding so they get all sorts of problems the one that's been on record for living the largest and the, the longest in this species is about eight years but that doesn't typically happen with a fulica so one of the commonly known largest species of giant african land snail is an achatina achatina the Achatina Achatina is also known as a Ghana tiger snail and that is down to their beautiful markings. So they have this bright orangey browny shell with these brown or dark black markings, literally like a tiger. So that's how they get their name on their shells. They have a dark grey brown body. They quite look quite scary looking in my opinion but they can get really large as well so typically their care is quite high in my opinion. Uh, they're definitely not a first time pet for an owner um, and that's because they need a temperature of about 27 to 29 degrees their humidity is very specific as well you can't get it wrong or skew a little bit with it so they need a 80 to 95 percent humidity which is really high you have to be careful with that it can't go as low and this is why you can't house different species of african snail together as well for example you can't put a ghana tiger snail with a fulica because their temperature and humidity needs are so different on the scale that they wouldn't do well together and one would potentially pass. Typically for the Achatina Achatina, they normally get to about 18 centimetres to 20 centimetres in length. But the record for the snail is about 30 centimetres in length and that's why they're known as one of the largest species, if not the largest in total. And then the last species that I'm going to be talking about today is the Achatina Reticulata. Such a mouthful to say all these words. So these guys are also harder to care for when it comes to the snail care and humidity and temperature. 
Typically they need a 80 to 90% uh, humidity and then they need about a 25 to a 27 degrees in heat. So you need to think about all those factors when having these as a pet. These guys are a short and fast growing snail. So when you have them as juveniles, they'll sprout up quite quickly and get quite large. They'll only grow to about 15 centimeters. So they're not gonna get absolutely massive, but they do grow, grow quickly compared to other snails. So you'll notice that they're larger in younger years compared to other species. These guys also lay about 10 to 350 eggs, which is typically normal for all snails, uh, but they do lay quite a lot of eggs still. They also have a really noticeable pattern. So with a reticulata, they always have these ridges or scratches on their shell, kind of like how we saw with Ciander down here, but in a prettier way, I guess. So they can have these really gorgeous patterns. I've seen ones that are pale with this dark end and they almost have these ridges and scratches, but like a marble effect I'd describe it as, or maybe wood, like on a tree. So guys, they're all the species I'm gonna be talking about today. Sorry if it wasn't what you were looking for or you wanted to hear more about a different species, but let me know if you'd like that in the future. And here's one last look at all of the shells together. Um, remember, you can watch the video on preserving African land snail shells, just so you can get a closer look at uh, what these beautiful shells can look like. Uh, when they do unfortunately pass it's really nice to have a reminder um, of your pet when they do pass my aim is to also create more snail videos now so let me know if you fancy a specific snail video or you'd like information on a specific snail species or care i'm happy to make that as long as i know the answers myself um, and i hope you've enjoyed this video or at least found it useful